What's up guys, it's World Gaming here and welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today we're going to be flying from Canberra to Sydney in the Flyby-Wire A320neo. I'll be taking you guys all the way from Cold and Dark Startup to Cold and Dark Shutdown at the very end. Hope you guys learn a lot and enjoy the video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, we are over here on Simbrief. You can find this on any web page and I'll leave the link to it down in the description. Uh, this is a great website for creating any sort of flight plan. It's much more detailed than the default in-game flight planner and it works really well with the fly-by-wire system. Now, before we get started with anything in Simbrief, we need to do some quick things over in the fly-by-wire website. If you come over here, I'll leave a link to this uh, and the direct link down in the description. But if you come over to home, we'll select uh, fly-by-wire A320NX right next to it. Uh, we'll go down to installation guide, it's one of these side options right here, installation guide. And we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom until we find, here it is, until we find Simbrief Airframe. This basically allows us to import the A320neo from Fly-by-Wire into the Simbrief selection of airplanes. So all you need to do is come over here, choose Simbrief Airframe. airframe uh, find the all versions area and click the Simbrief airframe link. This will take you to Simbrief and it'll give you this little notice. Uh, and you just need to do exactly what it says here. Scroll down, just leave everything as default and click save aircraft. Once you've done that, you can head back over to the main page of Simbrief. I'll do that here and I'll come over to this tab. Anyway, main page of Simbrief right here. So to create a new flight plan, you come over to the dispatch area, you can just click it like this, and you can create a new flight plan. Okay guys, so we can start filling out the various details of our flight plan. So starting at the top with the airline, we're going to select VOZ for Virgin Australia. I'm going to select the flight number of 1137, which will do perfectly for me. We'll be departing from Canberra, so YSCB for the ACO code and arriving at YSSY, which is Sydney. It's automatically filled out our alternate airport, which is YSCB, so back to Canberra in case of bad weather. We're going to select our airframe now, so we filled this out before, but we're going to be selecting our fly-by-wire A320NX. And it's going to fill out some advanced aircraft options for us. We're going to leave this all as default and move over to the right. Over here you have some different options for the flight plan, we're just going to change some reserve fuel, we're going to add 30 minutes extra. Down towards optional entries now, uh, our scheduled flight time is an hour, departure runway, runway 35, arrival runway, one, runway 16 right, taxi in and out time, extra fuel, altitude, passengers, freight, zero fuel weight, just batcher name, captain name, pilot ID. Uh, these are all the various options and we'll start by changing the departure runway. Departure runway is actually correct, runway 35 is where we'll be leaving from, and we'll be arriving on runway 34 left. We can click yes to change this, and our taxi in and out time is fine, extra fuel, fine, and altitude will change this to 36,000 feet. Our passengers will keep the aircraft reasonably light, I'll select something like, let's say 37. We'll keep freight as default, same as everything else here. We can now continue to scroll down, we can see our route is given right here, and if we scroll down even more, we get to see the rest of our flight plan on this map. This map is going to be very useful for planning our flight in game, so make sure to keep this tab open. But we can now come up and click generate flight right here, this will overwrite our previous flight plan, and now we can access this flight plan in game. Alright guys, here we are at Canberra in the game. And we can see our wonderful fly-by-wire A320 in the Virgin Australia livery. We can start by clicking ready to fly right here. And we're straight into the cockpit. So the first thing to do is go to the left of our screen and click on the tablet. We can now see there's an option here, import some brief data. If we click this, it's going to import our last generated flight. So as you can see, that's our flight YSCB Canberra to YSSY Kingford Smith in Sydney. You can see it gives us our route right here, as well as information about both airports. We can also access pin charts, maintenance and checklists, but we won't do that for this video. The last thing to do before we start getting ready is come over to the settings tab. 
we'll go over to realism and we can set ADAR's align time to instant. You can also adjust any other settings here if you feel like it, but this is very important since you're going to be waiting around for 10 minutes if you don't do this. So once you've got your tablet all customized, you can start by coming over to the dispatch area and we're going to find our block fuel. So right here, block fuel is 3867 kilograms. So we can now come to the ground section and we can go to fuel. Now we can round this up to 3,900 kilograms and I'm going to leave the refuel time in real and I'm going to click play. So this is going to start refueling the aircraft or in this case defueling and we're ready to get going. The first thing to do when setting up the aircraft is we're going to come to the overhead panel. I'm going to quickly access this panel here by clicking control 8 and it's going to give me a better view of it. First thing to do is turn on the batteries, so battery 1 and battery 2. Next thing that you can do is if this external power display is green and is available, you can click that as well. If the external power is not available, you can start up the APU right here by clicking APU master switch and then clicking start. Once you've done that, we're going to click on crew supply, this is our crew oxygen supply, and we're going to go up to our ADARs and set them all to nav. Once we've done that, we can turn our fuel pumps on, so engine 1 fuel pump, APU fuel pumps, and engine 2 fuel pumps. Now we can do our lighting, so emergency exit light down here will be set armed, no smoking on, seatbelts on, nav and logo on, and strobe lights on. Once we've done all that, we can go back to our fly pad over on the left hand side, and we can start boarding our passengers. So over in the ground section, we can go to services, we can click on the jet bridge here, see the jet bridge will start connecting to our aircraft, and we can start boarding our passengers by coming over to payload, click the, the download button, and it's going to import what we selected in SimBrief. You can have this on instant, fast or real, instant's unrealistic, and real just takes forever, so I'm going to go with fast. I'm going to click play, and that will start. The next thing to do is start adjusting our panel brightnesses. Over here you can see they're all quite dim, so we can use these knobs to make them a lot brighter. So I'm going to put these all on max, twisting this one as well. I'm going to go over here, and there are these two just under this panel. Move these all the way around. If you want, you can do your co-pilot's panels, but I don't have a co-pilot right now, so I'm going to leave those. We can go down to Ecamm, so the up display, to max, and the lower display. We'll move down, there's another two here, up to max, and up to max. One more on the other side, and the final one in the overhead panel again, right down here. So I'll set this to max. So now that our brightness is all set, we're going to set our Q&H for the airport. Our Q&H can be found right here, we're going to change this to hectopascals, and we're going to find the Q&H for our airport. If we come over and look on the left, we can find our airport information. Air pressure for Canberra is 1014 right now, so we're going to change the air pressure just up one to 1014. Down here, we can also change this to 1014 as well. Now that we've done our brightness and our air pressure, we can complete the cockpit preparation checklist. So coming back over to the fly pad, we can click on checklists, and we can click gear pins removed, fuel quantity is set, seat belts are on, ADARs are aligned, and bra is set. Next thing to do is head over to the MCDU. So our MCDU is our aircraft's flight computer, and it can be found right down here. I'm going to click Control 5 to get a better view of it. I'm going to turn the brightness up right here. And we can start by going to the MCDU menu, ATSU, AOC menu, and hit press. And we can either fill this out manually, or Flybyway gives us a call option in a data request. It's going to pull this from Simbrief and from the information it has, and it's going to fill these out for us. So now that we've clicked that, it's filled it out, and we can now come over to the inner page. 
Now I'm going to fill this out manually just to give you the example. So from two, we'll start with that. We're going from Canberra Airport, which as we saw before has the ICO code of S what YSCB and we're going to YSSY. So back to the MCDU. YSCB slash YSSY. So you basically just copy what's here and we can plug that right into the top. It's going to bring us here, we can just click return and so that's done. So now we're going to put our flight number in. This is VOZ1137 and pop that into the flight number area. Our cost index will be about 10 let's say. Cruising flight level, we're going to select 360 for our flight level and if we pop that in it's going to automatically fill out the temperature. Now that we've done our NIP page we can move on to our flight plan. So coming over to flight plan click F plan right here you can see that YSCB has already been filled in as well as YSSY. However there are no waypoints in the middle for us to get to either one. So we're going to start with YSCB. We're going to click this here. We're going to click on departure and we're going to select our departure runway. So as we selected on Simbrief, we're departing from runway 35, so we can click that, and we're going to be finding our departure. We can check this by going over to the flight pad here, and you can see the route. It says Cullen 1, which is our departure. So we'll find that here. Cullen 1, here we go, right at the top. We select this. There's no transition, so we just click insert. Now it's going to start inserting a couple waypoints for us to go to. And if we now look at our navigation display, we can also set this to plan for our flight plan and move that up to about 40 nautical miles distance. We can see this is our flight plan. So we're taking off from the runway, going straight out to Vicky and up to Colin. And as you can see, that's exactly what has been selected down here. The next thing that we're going to do, we're going to select our arrival. So we can click on YSSY, we can click on arrival and we can select our arrival runway. Now if you're doing this with ATC you'll generally be getting uh, arrivals while you're in the air, while you're coming in on your approach so you would do this at that point in the flight. But for us we're going to do it right now on the ground to make things easier. We're going to select ILS 34 left which is our runway and we're going to find our approach which if we check back over here is rivet 3. So back to the fly pad or back to the MCDU. Here's rivet 3. We can select that. No vias. And we can just click insert. So now as you can see directly off to Colin it's gone straight to rivet and then to big M. So now what we'll do is we'll check Simbrief to see if there are any other waypoints along the way. I can see there is one, it's called T-A-R-A-L. So what I'll do is come over here, I'll type it in, T-A-R-A-L, and we can plug it in under Colin. Now we've got to select which one it is because there are two waypoints that are called the same thing. So all we need to do is look at the Simbrief map and see where it is on the uh, latitude and longitude. So looking at that I can see the top one is correct and I can just select that there. So as you can see it is now plugged in in between Colin and Rivet. All I needed to do was put it over Rivet and it just popped in below Colin and it moved Rivet down. So now that that's done, we can have a look at our flight again. So here we go, looking at Cullen, we can scroll through our MCDU by using these arrows, just checking that everything seems to look proper. We can see there's a little problem here, so we'll look back down, and we can see there's a manual area and a flight plan discontinuity. So this is this area here where it wants us to fly manually to get to this waypoint. So we don't want that, we want it to fly automatically, so I'm going to click the clear button down here. And once it says clear there, I can pop that onto manual. It's going to delete manual, and I can do the same thing and delete the discontinuity. And now you can see it's joined up these two waypoints. And now it'll be a smooth approach straight in towards 3-4 left.
You can see it's a little squiggly there, but it will align itself once we're getting close to the airport. So now we can continue with our MCDU. So going back down to it, we can go to our init page and we're going to go to inner page B. So using these two arrows here, we're going to flick across and this is our init B page. All we need to do is put in our block fuel. So our block fuel is 3,900 kilograms. This here is displayed in tons, so we're going to transfer that to 3.9 tons. Just like that. And our zero fuel weight and zero fuel center of gravity. We can get the aircraft to automatically calculate that by just clicking this button. It gives us the values and we can click it again to put it in there. So now finally for our performance page, we can go over to performance. We can select flaps one for our takeoff and just pop that in there. Flex the temp, we can look at the temperature on the fly pad. So the temperature is 17 degrees Celsius over here. So one seven degrees or one, one seven. Pop that in flex the temp. Our transition altitude in Australia is 10,000 feet, I'm pretty sure. It might be 11,000, I'm not too sure. And there we go. The last thing we need to do is put in our V1, VR, and V2 speeds. And again, we can get the aircraft to calculate that by clicking on the thing. It gives us our speed and clicking again. And we can do the same thing, VR and V2. So that is our MCDU complete. We can now come back up to the overhead panel we can turn on the beacon lights and we can start off the APU. So if you already have it started up, don't worry, you've already done this step, but APU master switch on and APU start. So at this point in the flight, while the APU is starting, this is where you would start requesting your IFR clearance towards your destination. I'm not going to be using ATC for this video, but if you're on VATSIM or using AI ATC, I definitely recommend that. So getting IFR clearance, we would then get our assigned altitude to ascend to. I'm going to check our assigned altitude by going back to the arc menu, clicking the constraint tab, and see if there is any pink writing over where it is. So this is our approach, you can see it should look like this, but we gotta go find it at the beginning of our flight. So. Just scroll until we get to here, and we can see there is no pink writing. So we're just going to set our altitude straight up to our transition altitude of 10,000 feet. So now that we have our departure altitude set, we can go over to our checklists, and we can start our before start checklist. So the parking brake is on, our takeoff speeds are set. Our windows are closed and our beacon light is on. So at this point in the flight we're going to start our pushback. So coming over to services here, we're going to disconnect the jet bridge, go over to the pushback menu, turn the pushback system on, that is provided by Fly-by-Wire, it's very good and very easy to use. We're going to align the, the camera with the aircraft and call the tug over. So as you can see the tug is going to start attaching to the aircraft and we can just wait for the APU to turn on. So now that the APU is showing available, we can see that by the green light here, we can click on the APU bleed, which is right up here. If the APU does not show available down here, we simply just need to wait maybe a couple more minutes, and once it says shows green, you can click APU bleed. So now that we're ready for pushback, and the pushback tug is attached, as displayed here, we can turn our parking brake off, and we can start our pushback. So we're going to be taking off from runway 35, which is over towards our right, or sorry, towards our left, sorry. So we're going to be pushing back towards our right. So we can simply click the backwards button here, it's going to start reversing. We can also adjust the speeds with this uh, line here. I'm going to leave that as default, and you can see our aircraft starts pushing back. Now we're going to come down to this menu and change the ignition to ignition start with this dial here, and we can start up engine number 2. Okay guys, so as you can see, engine number 2 is starting to rev up here. That's 6.97. And we're waiting for this to show available on it. Once it shows available, we can start beginning engine number 1. And we're going to wait for that to do the same thing. Over on the other side, we can look at our pushback. 
Once our aircraft gets onto this curved line on the taxiway, we can start a turn onto the taxiway. Okay guys, so we're moving over our turning point, so we can simply either click left or right, or I can change the tug direction, so I'm going to move this arrow until the line lines up with the taxiway. So moving that there, moving it a bit sharper, so our aircraft is going to turn onto the taxiway, just like so. Now over on the other side, our engine 2 has gone to stable. It didn't show available because we were busy with the taxi thing, but I can flick engine 1 switch now, and we're going to watch that start to rev up. So as you can see the aircraft is starting to turn, we're about to be aligned with the taxiway. I'm going to adjust this tug direction even more just to make sure we do line up with the taxiway line. And we're still waiting for engine 1. So you can see it's getting close towards 20 and very soon we'll see something that says available, just like that. So when engine 2 did that it was safe to start up engine 1. And now that engine 1's done that we can flick the engine mode selector back to normal. We can also stop the taxi right about now, so we're just going to click stop on moving and we're going to turn the parking brake on. We can also do that manually over here. Now that the parking brake is on, we simply detach the tug and turn the pushback system off. So before start taxi procedure is to set our takeoff flap, so flaps on. We're going to set our spoilers to armed as well as our speed brake to max. This is in case of an aborted takeoff, um, but it's unlikely that that will happen. Now that that's all done and our engines are fully started up, we can come up to the APU, turn APU bleed off, and turn the APU master switch off. Since our electronics are now being powered by our engines, we don't need the APU anymore. If it was a nice and frosty environment, we would come up to the top panel and we would turn on the anti-ice. We have anti-ice for the wings, engine 1 and 2 right here. Since it's Australia, we don't need that and we'll leave that completely off for now. Next thing to do is to set our pitch trim, we'll come over here and move this to 1 up. I can check this by looking at our center of gravity over in the init B page. Our center of gravity is 24.5. Now I have a chart, you can find one online for setting your pitch trim, but at around 24 you're going to have 1 up for your pitch trim. Next thing to do is to set our rudder trim, we want that to be neutral. And as you can see, it's completely neutral, as indicated by this. So now that that's all done, we can start our after start checklist. So coming back over to the fly pad, after start anti-ice is set. Ecam status, we got to check that. So coming over here, clicking STS right here, and our status is normal. So that's all done. Pitch trim is set, and our rudder trim is neutral. Mark is checked, and move on to taxi. So before we start taxiing, we've got to check our flight controls. So we can come over to the F control area right here. And we can do full to the right for the rudder, neutral, full to the left for the rudder, neutral, elevators, full down, neutral, full up, neutral, ailerons, full left, neutral, full right, neutral. And there we go, everything's working as it should. We can now turn our lighting on so our runway turn lights will come on and our nose will light will be set to taxi. We can also turn predictive wind shear on down at the bottom here, switch that to auto and switch the weather system to weather system 1. Now we just quickly just check our ecam to display no blue so we've got to check the cabin and take off config test so we click take off config right here to test that it's all normal and we can ding the cabin up above we can hear that chime and no blue. So we're good to go. We can start our taxi checklist now and this is where we would request taxi clearance. So now that that's all done we can start taxiing towards our runway. So add a bit of throttle, release the parking brake and we'll start moving along the taxiway.
So taxiing around here we want to keep a taxi speed of about 15 knots and definitely no higher than about 30 knots. Anyway we're coming up on our runway, we can just start turning towards it and we'll stop at the hold short point right here. We'll apply some braking to slow down, holding short at runway 35 and put the parking brake back on. So now that we're at the holding short point, we're going to turn our landing lights to on. We're going to change our nose wheel light to take off. We're going to turn our TKS on to alt auto and we'll turn it to TA over RA. Now most people do this once they're on the runway, but I do it now just so I have less things to think about. Anyway, just checking our navigation display. We want this to be on arc, we want constraints to be on, and about 40 nautical miles should be good. And now we will taxi onto the runway. Obviously you will need to take off or taxi onto the runway clearance. But we can look over to our left and to our right to make sure there are no incoming aircraft. And we can make our turn. So here we are lined up with the runway, I'm again going to stop and put the parking brake on. We can do our lineup checklist now, so right here we're on the runway, TKS is on and PAX 1 and 2. PAX 1 and 2 is on the overhead panel right here, PAX 1 and PAX 2. You just got to make sure it doesn't say off and you're good to go. So now that we've lined up, just a quick briefing of our takeoff, we're going to put our engines up to 50% throttle. Once we're sure our engines are revving up correctly, we're going to put it up to the flex detent for a nice and efficient takeoff. Once we've done that and we've got a positive rate of climb, we're going to put our gear up. Once we get about 1,500 feet, we're going to turn the autopilot on and move our throttle back towards the climb detent. Now, once our speed exceeds the green marker shown over here, we're going to retract our flaps all the way up and then we'll start cleaning up the aircraft as in retracting our uh, speed brakes as well as making sure the auto brakes off and turning off all takeoff and landing lights. So now we're ready to go, we can start revving up the throttle here up to 50%. We can check the ECAM, make sure they're all revving up correctly, there we go and they stop at 50% so parking brake can come off and move the throttle up towards the flex detent right there so now using the rudder to keep ourselves aligned with the runway coming through 80 knots just a little bit of nose down pressure 100 knots we're going to take that pressure off v1 and we're going to rotate now so a nice gentle pitch up we're now off the runway and we're climbing so we can now put the gear up we're already through 2000 feet because of the uh, already you know raised altitude of, of the terrain but we're going to keep climbing just a bit more just to make sure we're well off the ground and now I'm going to turn the autopilot on as well as auto thrust and I'm going to move our throttle back towards the climb D10. So we are well above our green marker, just shown by S there, so we can retract the flaps. And now our speed will increase to our climb thrust. So now we can clean up the aircraft, boilers, disarm, lights can all go off. And our auto brake is off. So there we go, we have officially taken off. Our aircraft is on managed mode, actually it isn't here. So we push the knob in, so it's on a managed climb up towards 10,000 feet. Our speed is managed, as you can see by the pink marker here, but aiming for 250 knots. And our heading is managed as well, we're following the assigned flight plan. 
We're now climbing through 6,000 feet and towards 10,000 feet, and I'll catch you guys once we're approaching that altitude. So, okay guys, we are at about 10,000 feet and we've started our first turn towards the right. So at 10,000 feet we can move our altitude all the way up, well our chosen altitude, up to flight level 360 or 36,000 feet. And I'll push the knob back in for a managed ascent up to that altitude. So our thrust is at climb as shown there and we are climbing for our altitude. Next thing to do now that we are past our transition level is, as you can see, the q and is flashing, telling us we need to change to standard. We just push the knob in, and there we go, standard D10. As well as down here, we can just push it, and it changes to standard. So this is going to change the q and up to uh, basically agreed upon uh, air pressure once you're up in the air. We can also turn the seatbelt signs off now that we're in a stable ascent up towards our cruising altitude. And I'll meet you guys once we're up in the air. Okay guys, here we are climbing through flight level 200 and we're climbing up towards our cruising altitude. Now down on the navigation display we can see this white arrow here. This indicates the point which we need to descend from our cruising altitude. As you can see, it's actually rather close, it's within 40 nautical miles, and uh, that's the point which we will need to begin a descent. Now the fact that we're already not at our cruising altitude is a bit worrying, but that's totally fine, we can just start the descent early. Now it is quite a short flight, it's less than an hour from Canberra all the way over to Sydney, but you can see here there are other restrictions that we need to meet, so this is definitely the point in which we need to start our descent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch our cruising altitude all the way down to 20, let's say 24,000 feet. And we're going to meet that pretty quickly. Now, since I've set it to that, this white marker might change as well. But we'll just have to see. Alright guys, we have met our new cruising altitude of flight level 240. And our uh, descent marker is about 10 kilometers away, oh sorry, 10 out of miles, not kilometers. Uh, once we reach that point, once we reach about 5 nautical miles away, that's when I would like to start the descent, since it gives us a little extra room to slow down if needed. As you can see, it is getting further away from us, uh, slightly, every so often, uh, indicating that it has recognized that we are at a lower cruising altitude and it's adjusting for that. I can come back down here and find where we have our cruising flight level. I'm going to change this to 240. Now that that's changed, it's minus 32 degrees here. It's going to change the airspeed that we'll be flying at. And you can see that the marker of descent has gone way further away. Anyway, since the white marker is still getting closer, now is a good time to start our pre-descent checklists. So we're going to start by filling out the approach phase. So coming to the performance tab here in our MCDU, you can see we can activate the approach phase here. We need to enter destination data though, so we can come over to the next phase, next phase, until we're on this. So we need to fill out heaps of different information for our approach. So the Q&H for Sydney, we can check over here, is 11014, it just changed. So it's the same as it was in Canberra, but 11014. Our temperature over there is 19 degrees, rather cold. Uh, magnetic winds, so 150 degrees at 16 knots, so 150 degrees at, so slash 16 for 16 knots. There we go. Our transition altitude will be 10,000 feet as before. Our braro, so our minimums, will be uh, will be displayed on a chart if you have one. If you don't have one, that's fine. We can just go over to our flight plan and we can check our final 
uh, altitude. So we can go over to the flight plan here, move down. So our final given altitude seems to be, let's see, seems to be 3,000 feet. So we can come back to arc. Uh, we can go over to performance, find our approach, and we're going to put 3,000 feet in here. It's just an easy way to do your minimums uh, when you don't have a um, chart of the airport. Anyway, we're coming up on our descent point, so we're going to set our first descent altitude, which was 8,000 feet. We're going to push it in for a managed descent, and that's going to begin a descent down towards 8,000 feet. Now, as you can see, 8,000 feet is the first restriction there, so that's why I'm going down towards them. Alright guys, we are coming in towards our rivet waypoint here. So if we zoom in on the flight plan, we can see our first uh, restriction is 8,000 feet, that's big M as we covered before. But at Tammy after that, we need to be below 9,000 feet, so we need to make sure of that. And we need to be at 250 knots. Also indicated here by these two arrows, the blue arrow is where we will reach our descent point, and the white arrow is where we need to reach our descent point. So, um, we definitely need to be below 8,000 feet, or b below 9,000 feet once we get to Tammy, and we need to be at 6,000 feet once we get to Boogie, as indicated there. So, I'm actually going to increase our descent rate, we're currently descending still very fast at 2,500 feet per minute, but what I can do is I can add some speed brakes here, and I'm going to push down on the knob and change our descent down at a rate of 3,300 feet per minute. Let's just see how that goes. So you can immediately see these lines have moved forwards, uh, so we will descend much quicker, and hopefully we'll descend in time. What I can do as well, I can actually set our descent altitude straight down to 6,000 feet, because I definitely know we'll be above 8,000 feet by the time we reach big M. Continuing on with our flight plan, uh, I'm just going to go into plan mode here so we can see this better. So big M, yep, 8,000 feet, below 9,000 feet, 250 knots, above 6,000 feet there, and once we reach B, we can start descending all the way down to 3,000 feet. Now, once we reach this last May point, we need to be at 150 knots, and we can also begin slowing down for our final approach. So as far as our aircraft configuration goes, we want to be fully configured by the time we reach our 3000 feet marker. That means gear down, flaps full, speed brake is armed, and auto brake is set. So we want that all before 3000 feet, just so we don't have anything else to figure out. So we're moving down through 10,000 feet here, which is our transition altitude. So we can start taking some things off. So the first thing to do, is landing system can come on. This gives us some indicators of where we are in terms of the runway. Our seatbelt sign can come back on. Our landing lights can turn on as well. As well as our QNH can be set to the airport. So 110114 or 11014. You can check that, yep, 11014 as well as this bottom one, 110, well, 1014. There we go. So coming almost at 8,000 feet at big M, but that's going to be fine, we can just continue descending down. And as you can see, we're going to reach, uh, we're going to reach Tammy at about 8,000, uh, about 6,000 feet. So we can actually ease off on our descent rate and start lowering our airspeed. So I'm going to set this to selected airspeed, and I'm going to tune this all the way down to 250 knots because we need to be going at that speed once we get to Tammy. So as you can see the aircraft begins slowing down. I'm again just going to make sure we do have vertical speed. So I want to be descending at at least 2,000 feet per minute right now. 
Oh, no, we can tune that way up. We can go to about 500 feet per minute. Because we've got plenty of time before we get to Boogie. But there's about 250 knots as we approach our uh, selected altitude. And I'll catch you guys once we're at the next stage of our descent. Alright, so uh, just before we reach Tammy here, we've now got everything set up for the descent. So we've got our landing lights on, we've got our seatbelt sign on, uh, as well as our QNH set. We, so we can come over to the fly pad and we can start our approach checklist. So the minimums and bra is set, seatbelt sign is on, auto brake uh, needs to be set, so we can do that now. It's a long runway, so we're going to set it to low and engine mode selector is as we want it. So, yep, at about 6,000 feet now as we approach Tami. Probably descending a bit quick then, but it's absolutely fine. We're at 250 knots, which is just as indicated. And we're going to continue heading towards Boogie. Some other things to note as we approach, we can see our yellow lines on the side here is our current aircraft heading as well as the green crosshair in the middle is our flight director. So if I turn the flight director off, as you can see it disappears, but definitely want that on. These purple diamonds on the side is our localizer. This is where we want to uh, match up with once we reach our, uh, once we reach our final approach. So currently it's saying we should be descending a bit more, but we need to be above 6,000 feet once we reach Boogie, so I'm gonna leave that. Uh, what I can do is prepare for the next ascent, so over in our altitude, I can tune this down to 3,000 feet. I won't set it yet, but once we get reach boogie, I can just simply push it in, and we'll start descending down. So just making sure we are on the arc mode right here, so we can see we're getting really close to boogie. We can also see the airport now, this is Sydney airport, and we see Sydney harbour off here. So coming in, we're about to make our turn, here we go, and there we go, we've reached Boogie, the altitude restriction's off, so we can push the knob in, and we'll begin our managed descent down towards our altitude. So I'm going to engage some selected air, uh, selected vertical speed here, I want to descend at about 1000 feet per minute, so I'll try to keep that. I'm also going to lower our airspeed now, we're going to go all the way down to 220 knots. In fact, yeah, we'll keep 220 knots for now. So we continue turning in, trying to keep that 1000 feet per minute as vertical speed. I'm not quite getting it, but we're going to descend in time anyway. So there's 220 knots. Speed brake still on, which will be good if we need to decrease speed anymore, which we will do right now, down to 200 knots. We need to stay above 150 knots, but we can reduce speed however much we want in the meantime. So coming down towards 200 knots now, I'm going to select flaps 1. There we go, we can see the airspeed restriction there for flaps 1. And we're coming down towards 4000 feet. So now that we're below 5000 feet, we can turn our approach mode on, it's just a decent time. So we come to the performance page on the MCDU, click activate approach phase, and click it one more time to confirm. And we are now in the approach phase. So again, we can see the guidance by the diamonds. We won't need to pay attention to those quite yet since we aren't lined up with the runway. But we're staying on our correct heading, continuing down at a good airspeed. You can see it's changed our selected airspeed down to about 2,000 feet per minute right now. It's quite a lot. But we're keeping our uh, airspeed, which is all good. I'm going to slow us all the way down to 180 knots and we'll keep that for a while now. But now that we slow down to 180 knots we can start applying more flaps, so flaps 2. There we go.
and I think we might be able to do flaps 3. There we go. Flaps 3 at 108 knots. Perfect. And we're about at 3,000 feet. 100 above. So we're about to make our left hand bank back towards the airport. Minimum. Uh, now that we have turned our approach mode on, we can flick the runway turn lights on as well as nose wheel light can go to taxi. We're making our final bank here over the ocean. There are our minimums call out as we reach 3,000 Minimum. feet. It's happening quite a lot, quite frustrating. Probably should have the minimums at like 2,000 feet. Minimum. Jeez, okay. I'll be fine. We'll just leave it like that. We can see the airport over there. We are now perpendicular with it, heading towards our second last waypoint. Minimum. So, still at 180 knots, I Minimum. will slow down towards 160, and we can put the speed brake up and arm it. Minimum. Jesus, this minimum call out. Okay, new recommendation. When you have minimums, set them to about 1,000 feet below your final altitude. There we go. 2,000 feet, that'll be better. So we're at 160 knots, we can... Yep, let's do flaps full. So full flaps now. Airspeed still being managed. So we're approaching our final turn. So to line up officially with the runway, what we want to do is turn on the localizer. What we can do is just click this button, LOC, and it's going to line us perfectly up with the runway. Now today we'll be performing a fully automatic approach just to get you guys comfortable with the aircraft and how it moves. Uh, you can do manual approaches, normally you'll start your takeover from the autopilot at about a thousand feet up, but we're going to go all the way down to touchdown with the autopilot today. So approaching our final turn, I'm going to change our airspeed, oh no, we'll, we'll keep it at 160 knots for now, but approaching our final turn, right here, there we go, so the localizer here will line us up with this diamond, so the diamond at the bottom, the horizontal, and then once we align with the vertical one we can turn on our approach descent. So I will turn a localizer on for right about now to get lined up for the runway. So I'll put the localizer on. I'm going to set our airspeed to 150 knots and we can put the gear down. There we go, you can hear it coming out. Localizer is on, so it's lining us up with the runway. waiting for this diamond to be lined up. There we go. Still at 3,000 feet. Still at 150 knots. You can also check our landing speed, so we're going to approach at 121 knots. Coming in. Rather slow, but slow is good. And here we go. So this diamond is crossing over the yellow line here, so now we can click APPR for our approach descent. And as long as this is lined up perfectly, the approach descent will work fine with taking us down towards the runway. So we're coming down now. It's going well. We are aligned with runway 3, 4 left, as indicated there. 150 knots still. I'll continue this 150 knots until I pass down last waypoint. Put this down to 10 miles and I'm literally not doing anything here the aircraft is fully taking itself down so here we go that's 2,300 feet and we're dead on the approach about a thousand feet per minute that's really stable that's really good and here's the 150 knot marker almost past it and then we can 
start slowing down even more. Hundred above. Two thousand. Minimum. So there's our minimum call out again at 2,000 feet. We'll pass the airspeed restriction, so we'll go down to 140 knots. Just making sure it does slow down. Making sure our speed brake is armed. Auto brakes are on. Everything's good. We'll check the ECAM, so tick ECAM, no blue. Uh, we need to check the cabin, that's all. There we go, no blue. And I can slow down even more to that approach speed of 1, 2, 1 knots. There we go, coming down on the runway now, nice and low. Beautiful approach. At about 130 knots, slowly gradually going down to 120. Making sure flaps are at full, yes they are. We are all good. 1,000. The 1,000 feet. Pitching up a little bit to align with the diamonds again. So at this point you would turn autopilot off by clicking this one. And you would manually fly it down. But we're coming in here. We can see the poppies on the left or right. This is how you would guide yourself down. So too red and too white is what you're aiming for. If there are more white lights, that means you're too high. If there are more red lights, that means you're too low. So that's going to line you straight up with the landing. If you get it right. So 600 feet, 121 knots. And since we're getting really close, our landing speed is 116. 500. So I'm just going to tune that back to 116 knots. Now do get ready because you will have to manually take over once we touch down. But that's 400. 300. Remember to engage reverse thrust after touching down. Try to keep the nose wheel up for as long as possible, but try not to tail strike as well. One hundred. So any second now. Fifty. Thrust idle. Then retard. Touchdown. Retard. Thrust back. There's reverse thrusters. Keeping ourselves aligned with the runway. Nose is still up. There we go. Can put the nose down now. Slowing down. Reverse thrusters can come off. As well as the auto brake. Come off as we roll down at about 40 knots, and we'll take the high speed exit right here just off towards the right. So, adding some manual braking just to make sure we do slow down. And that's perfect! So here we go, entering the taxiway now. And I'm just going to stop once we're past that marker, I'm going to turn on the parking brake. So we are now stopped on the ground, everything's good. So we can start cleaning up the aircraft. So flaps, we can retract them all the way up to zero. We can put the TKS to standby. Uh, what we can do is we can turn speed brakes, they can go off. Weather radar can come off. APU can come on, so APU mask switch on, APU start, there we go. Anti-ice can come off if you have it on. Uh, all these landing lights, they can come off. We'll keep the taxi and turn light on though. So the after landing checklist now begins. So in coming in, after landing checklist, it's just radar, weather radar and predictive wind shear. And now we request taxi clearance to our gate. So I can just pick a gate here, row the engines and begin taxiing. So here's the domestic terminal in front of us. I'm just gonna take this taxiway. It seems like it'll work. Taxiing through here. 
making sure there's no one crossing this runway or landing in this runway yep we're all good so I can continue to cross this without too many problems going a bit fast but that's fine there's no one at the airport just aligning with the taxiway now it's a smooth ride over to our gate some braking now and we'll take this right hand turn. I'm gonna apply some thrust just because this tarmac does elevate. I'm gonna go to the left here as well. And we'll take the next stand. So this one right here, we're going to take it. So start turning off towards the right. There we go, we're turning in. There's fire trucks crossing. Who knows why? Slow down a bit. Don't want to hit the terminal. And we're just going to slow down and try to get that nose wheel right over the yellow line. So there we go, we've stopped, we are at our gate, and now we can turn our external power on. So, we come up to the top panel, our external power is already on, we've got to turn it off, but it should look like this, and you can just simply click it to turn it on. So, once the external power is now on, we can turn the runway turn lights off, the taxi nose wheel light can go off, our APU bleed will come on. And our engines will come off. So engine two, off. Engine one, off. There we go. So once we've done that, seatbelt sign that can come off. Uh, APU can now come off as well. We can turn the beacon lights off, and we'll turn all the fuel pumps off. Six. Now we do the parking checklist. So over on the fly pad over here, parking, engines, wing lights, fuel pumps, parking brake, and shocks are set. Fly pad. We're gonna connect to the jetway. So over to services, connect the jet bridge. We're gonna come and connect to our aircraft, and we can disembark our passengers. So. Those seven passengers here, set it to zero, and we can just click the play button, that will start disembarking. So, now that we've done that, back up to the top panel, our ADARs can come off now. Our crew oxygen, that can come off, we're on the ground, it's all good. Emergency exit light, that can come off. No smoking, that can also come off now. Nav and logo lights, those can come off. And once all the passengers are off, we will turn the external power um, off and we can shut down the aircraft. So there we go, no more passengers on board. Back up, external power can come off. And we can also turn the batteries off. So battery two off, battery one off. Uh, once we've done that, we can do the secure aircraft checklist right here. So oxygen, emergency exit lights, batteries, and EBF, EFBs. And there we go. Aircraft turned off, the APU finally turned off. There we go. And I can shut down the fly pad, just like that. So there we go guys, there's been a full flight from cold and dark startup to cold and dark shutdown. Canberra to Sydney in the fly-by-wire A320neo. Hope you guys really enjoyed this video, hope you learned a lot, and comment down below any other aircraft you want me to cover in the future. But that's all for today guys, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.